I found a way how to stay motivated or how to boost my motivation in the morning. But let me show you how. Actually, let me take you there. Yeah, so we need to move to this space. Here it is much more focused. So, hi everybody. I found the way how to stay motivated and how to keep being motivated. You know, throughout my year, I have struggled to be motivated, to stay motivated, to be, to wake up at the exact pace as I wanted. Today, I finally slept enough. I woke up and I was feeling refreshed as I never have felt before in a long time. And that got me thinking that Sleeping for a long time is good, but uh, yesterday I set up this goal that if I will wake up, I will do a nice breakfast, go to the town, buy several stuff, get the coffee from that cafeteria I've shown you earlier, and come back and record a video. So how to stay motivated? You can be thinking that I'm motivated every day, that I get to shoot whatever I want. No, that's not true. I somehow struggle to get the right endorphins, to get the right energy, but most of the times I am trying to get the natural energy out of me, not to being supplemented by coffee or energy drinks or quick gains of sugar. Videos on the YouTube won't tell you how to do that because they they tell you those one specific things, those do 100 push-ups, do a cardio for 20 minutes, cook some eggs, have a nice healthy breakfast, don't eat until the lunch and have that intermittent fasting. You have to find that for yourself. Don't try them for one day, try them for at least a week because you need to build a habit for that and you will realize whether that's pushing you forward and whether that's giving you the right energy that you need or that you have to try something else. I, for example, I need to keep trying new things because I somehow cannot tell myself that this is enough. Okay, so that's for motivation, but let's get into the thing that I wanted to talk about on this episode of Teach Tuesday and that's on how I approach the editing of my videos. So this should help you to be going. I'm not saying this is the perfect of how to do things. It's just when I'm now and this suits me really well. Today is about how to organize and diversify tracks on your timeline when you're cutting a videos. So let's hop into the Premiere Pro and I will show you the steps that I take and a bit of a more thorough explanation what to do when you're starting out. Okay, so I'm going to create a new testing project just for the purposes and this is the view of Premiere Pro CC. So I'm just create a new, new project. I'm not gonna select anything. I'm not even going to create a new sequence, just the name and the position. I'm gonna hit the create. And now I'm just gonna drag in one of my previous videos. There is a folder, A-roll, B-roll, and the soundtrack. I'm gonna drag it in and place it in the mine project testing bin folder. And now I'm going to create a simple uh, sequence that's gonna be my final sequence. I'm gonna place it and it's here on the timeline. It's basically your editing software as you like have as well one. There is a preview file, there is this track, kind of like your working table, and then there is the, you have your basic files over here. So the basic shortcuts when you're starting with the Premiere Pro or whatever you have, from my perspective, the most powerful ones are the Ripple Trim, as you can see over here, and it's called Ripple Trim Previous Edit to Playhead, and the one is Ripple Trim Next Edit to Playhead. So the basic is, drag the clip onto your working table, and now I will increase, by dragging this uh, body down, I will increase the size of this entirely. Also increase this because I want to have this nice and big. I can also trim it over here. And now I just want this empty space out. So I'll go to the beginning. And now I will use the cutting tool, the razor tool, and select it over here. If you have your timeline over here, there is a shortcut in the Premiere Pro called Command K. And if you press that, it's gonna cut at the specific place when you have your play hat thing. And now I want this empty space out of the equation. I want to have, I want to continue playing just from the point when I'm closing the book. So I want to trim now from this point 
backwards but to the end of the selected track. I have my timeline tracker, I will position it at the specific point when I want for the video to continue. Now I want to everything here, I want it for it to disappear and I want to continue from this specific point. That's the shortcut of a Q, ripple trim to the previous edit and it will just take and consume the entire thing that was before, you know, the previous edit. So this is the previous edit. It will take all of it and just trim and it will do, it will make my life much easier because it won't, it will do basically this. At this point, it will take a razor tool, cut, select this track, delete it, and then take this track and just place it over here. That took like seven seconds, right? Okay, now go to the, going to the ending of this clip, I want it to end here when I'm scratching my head, for example. I want this to disappear, so that's your W shortcut. Doing the exact thing will cut everything that's until the next edit on this track instead of just cutting the thing, selecting it, deleting, and then dragging everything that's on the right side of your timeline to that point. It will be much more self-explanatory when you have much more things on your timeline because it will, for example, let's look at here, I will just make a cut over here and I want to have this, not me dragging the book, right? So I will leave the time tracker over here and I'll press the W and you see all the things that were ahead of my cut moved with my edit. That means that I don't have to select everything that's on the right side of my editing place and drag everything over here. I just use the ripple trim to the next edit and it will take everything automatically and move with me. So this is your ripple trim to the previous and the next edit. Now I'm gonna ev delete everything from the timeline and now let's look at the timeline. Now if you want to have things organized as I like to do it, click over here, I create tracks and basically I'll just slap for about like a five audio and a video tracks to have at my disposal. Now to have things organized I'm using these first two tracks video one and video two I use them for my a roll to have seamless transitions so if I have my a roll I'll place one track over here and I'll place for example second track over here and when I go and want to have a transition I will just slowly fade over here to, to this position and then I'll fade this over it. And for example, now we'll be playing this one and I don't want this one, I will drag another track. So you get it, that's my A roll. The first and the second video track is for the A roll. Now, if I want some B roll to, ho to go with it, I'm not placing it on the first or the second track because that's reserved for my A-roll. I might as well just lock these two with this lock button on the left. So now I don't and I cannot place the tracks over there. Thing that I'm using my third and the fourth video track for B-roll. So if I have some clip, I will drag it over there. That means these are following the first two for the A-roll, the second two for the B-roll. Now we're coming to the layer, I'll play so we, we do not get it messed up. The tracks of five, six and seven, these three are for my three main things that makes the videos so good. And those are, the first one is for C-Log correction. I'll place it there, drag it to the end of the timeline and I know that this guy will be holding my C-Log correction so the colors will be correct on the picture. The second one is color grading. I'll like edit, take it, drag it there. This one will be holding my color grading preference to look it exactly as I want it. And the last one is called black bars. Those are those black trim bars at the top and the bottom of the footage that will make it a little bit more cinematic. The rest, the eight track up to how many tracks you want, these will hold graphical content that's already color graded. So I don't have to be worried that if I will place color grading and color correction on the track on the tracks five and six, everything beneath will get color graded. But I know that I'm not putting on the first or the second track nothing else than the A-roll. 
On the track three and four, I'm not putting anything else than a B-roll. So I need all of these to be color graded because I shot them with my camera and which has S-Log profile. Then I have color grading and color correction tracks with the black bars. And then I have my graphics. If I want to, at that specific point, if I want that black bars to trim also my footage that I'm inserting as my pictures, I can drag the black bars and put it above the ones that will be underneath it, and underneath it those will get trimmed as well. But I have to be careful about this because if I'm color grading and color correcting pictures that have been already filtered in the Lightroom and I already adjusted them to look exactly as I want them, they will look bad afterwards when I'm exporting the video. So first two tracks are for the A-roll, second tracks are for the B-roll, then the three tracks are for color correction, color grading and the black bars, and then from the track number eight to infinity, those are for my graphical content that's been already color graded or is exactly how I want it to look like and I do not want it to change colors or whatever. Okay, the other part of the timeline has similar effect. If I place the video track on the lane number one, the audio of that track will be placed on the audio track one, second one on the second audio track and vice versa. They are linked to each other. That's why if I will take this away and if I have been working exactly as I told you right now, I know that this two first tracks corresponds to the A roll above it. These two correspond to the B roll above it. So I'm left with the track five to infinity again. Most of the time I'm not using the audio from the B roll, but if I will be, I can easily just leave it over here and the track three and four will be carrying audio for my B-roll. If I'm making some huge film, I will reserve the track three and the four for the B-roll audio. Maybe I will make it even bigger, but I will leave this blank. So, and for the track five to six, these two tracks I'm using for a soundtrack. I'll go over here, I will take some music and I will just place it onto the place of my soundtrack. Now, why would I want two tracks for my soundtrack? Well, I can fade in into a different song. So I will do it exactly like this. Now, the sound design can be a little bit exhausting if you are doing it for the first time or if you are really excited about it. That's why I'm reserving from the, six, from the track seven to the infinity all for my sound design because you can have really large amounts of tracks that you want to add. Also here in my folder, as you can see in my soundtrack, for example, this pencil right, you can have this track wherever because you want to seemingly fade between the tracks when you are editing stuff and you do not want to have a mess of it. But if I will look at this, I want to know when I'm looking just at that moment onto my timeline I want to know that I have here voiceover for the A roll then I have a voiceover for the B roll then I have my soundtrack and all the rest is my sound design that's why I have things organized and if I want to lock for example yeah let's take this scenario into consideration I want to cut the soundtrack but I do not want the sound design to be cut during that process because if I will use my shortcut for cutting I will place this over here and I'll use my shortcut you know for example I will use my trim to the previous file if I'll use the queue as you can see everything got cut everything got moved and suddenly the sound design is incorrect the soundtrack is incorrect everything is incorrect if I want to and there's another useful shortcut is how to lock every track and move just to one that you wanted. If you will use shift and click, and if you will shift and click on these locks, everything will get locked along the audio, right? If I will go in the video, video is still not locked. So I will, for example, let's say I will lock also all video tracks. And now I can unlock whatever I want and work with that specifically. And I know that my shortcuts won't work on the other tracks. So what are the summary of our shortcuts? We have Q and a W, that means trim ripple to the previous or the next edit. 
Then we have locking all the tracks by simply holding shift and clicking on the lock and it will lock all of the video or the audio tracks. Then we have command K which will cut the selected track where our timeline tracker is at and we know how to diversify your video and audio tracks to give it a little bit more sense. You can also go for A roll, for B roll tracks but keep in mind that these preparations beforehand will make easier everything else afterwards the process. We have learned today four shortcuts to move around your timeline much easier and we know how to diversify the timeline a bit more thoroughly than placing everything on one video track. Okay, so I hope this wasn't really exhausting as it might look from my perspective. Those are the basics. If you will diversify your video and audio tracks, if you will keep in mind those shortcuts, you are quickly done and you can go on forward and do anything after that. So I really enjoyed your time over here. I hope that you have a great day and I hope you had a great day. In whatever timeline you are in the world, that you have morning, evening, lunch, whatever. I hope that you are having a wonderful time. I hope that this somehow helped you. And use those shortcuts, diversify your tracks, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye. Yeah.